go. This is a three day old male with acute respiratory failure that we've been consulted for potential ECMO support. He was born um, at 40 weeks gestation via uncomplicated uh, standard vaginal delivery with one hour of life developed tachypnea and desaturations requiring CPAP ventilation. He was then transferred to us for further management. He was intubated upon arrival and placed on high frequency ventilation due to PO2s in the 40s and acidosis. He was also placed on 20 parts of nitric oxide and was um, initiated on or given one dose of Curacef. He had progressive cardiopulmonary compromise and was placed on a dopamine infusion at 20 mics per kilo per minute, dobutamine at 20 mics per kilo per minute, milrinone at 0.25 mics per kilo per minute, vasopressin infusion at 0.2 milliunits per kilo per minute, and an epinephrine drip at 0.03 mics per kilo per minute. He was also started on Q6-hydrocortisone and a sildenafil infusion at 0.8 mg per kilo per day. His current status, he is on, from a neuro standpoint, on rocuronium at 0.6 milligrams per kilo per hour, fentanyl at two mics per kilo per hour, midazolam at 0 0.0, at 0.1 milligrams per kilo per hour, and his cranial ultrasound um, showed no evidence of hemorrhage. From a respiratory standpoint, he's on high frequency um, ventilation with a frequency of eight, an MAP of 20, an amplitude of 50, and 100% FiO2. Still on 20 parts per million of nitric oxide. His most recent gas was 736, 43, 43, um, with a preductal sat of 87 and a postductal sat of 84. From a cardiac standpoint, um, his echocardiogram shows suprasystemic RV pressures, a moderate PDA that is shunting bidirectionally, decreased RV function, normal LV function. He remains on hydrocortisone, two milligrams per kilo Q6. His dopamine is still at 20, dobutamine is still at 20, epi remains at 0.03, vasopressin is still at 0.2, sildenafil is at 0.8, and his milrinone is still at 0.25. His cerebral nears are registering 78 to 90%, and his renal nears are 76 to 86%. From an FENGI standpoint, he is NPO on IV fluids. He's got a Foley in place that's putting out about two cc's per kilo per hour in urine, um, and he has received multiple uh, normal saline boluses. From a heme standpoint, his H&H &H is 43 and 13.8, and he's got a platelet count of 187. From an ID standpoint, he's on 4TAS Q12 and ampicillin Q12 for suspected uh, sepsis. So differential diagnoses would be respiratory distress, acute respiratory failure, pulmonary hypertension, meconium aspiration, and sepsis. So plan for him will be to cannulate onto BV ECMO using a 13 French origin cannula, um, secondary to respiratory failure due to meconium aspiration. So plan from a neuro standpoint would be to continue his fentanyl at two, his midazolam at 0.1, his rock at 0.6, and get daily head ultrasounds to monitor for IVH. From a respiratory standpoint, he'll go on BV ECMO at 100 to 120 cc's per kilo per minute of flow. He'll wean his high frequency ventilator as tolerated and transition him to conventional ventilation. We will wean off his sildenafil and continue his nitric at 20 parts per million. We'll get daily chest x-rays and do gases Q2 for now. From a cardiac standpoint, we'll wean his pressure support as tolerated. We'll repeat his echo in the morning, continue his hydrocortisone Q6. From an FENGI standpoint, he'll remain NPO with IV fluids at 70 per kilo per day. We will hold diuresis for 48 to 72 hours. From a heme standpoint, we will um, use bivalorudin for our anticoagulation. We'll get PTTs Q1 with a gold PTT of 70 to 80. We'll transfuse blood products per um, the ECMO orders. And then from an ID standpoint, he will remain on um, cefepime Q12 and um, ampicillin Q12 and Fortas Q12 for um, rule out sepsis and we will monitor circuit cultures twice a week.